here in the Philippines, I studied pharmacy. But right now I'm taking masters in pharmacology. Hey, Amis, you're welcome back to my channel. It's your video the Echo. If you're a new subscriber, you're welcome to this team. If you're an old subscriber, thank you for always coming back. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Kindly smash the red subscription button and subscribe to this channel, okay? So you're gonna be notified anytime I have a new video. On today's video, we'll be interviewing this handsome man beside me. We'll be interviewing him. He's a very big man, a celebrity uh, in Nigeria. He's a, he's, a, he's a very rich man, okay? So you guys don't mind me. He don't like showing himself, but I'm sorry, I have to put him out there for you, single ladies. You get it? <laughs> so I'll uh, allow him to introduce himself. What's your name? Introduce yourself to my subscribers. Okay, um, my name is Casey, Kelichi Precious Wuna. Okay. That's my name. So, what else? Okay, where are you from? Um, okay, state. <laughs> you know, where? I'm used to this. Um, where are you from? Nigeria because you're in the Philippines. So, okay, where am I from? I'm from. Is it in Nigeria or Abia State? I'm from Abia State. Your country? I'm a Nigerian, of, oh. of course. Not of course we don't know. Do we know? We don't know. He's a Nigerian. Nigerian. I'm okay. a sure Nigerian. So. He's a sure Nigerian man. Okay, Casey. Um, what are you studying, or what did you study? So, here in the Philippines, I studied pharmacy. But right now, I'm taking masters in pharmacology. Mmm, mm. you guys hear that? I told you guys this is a very big one. He studied pharmacy in the Philippines, and right now he's taking pharmacology for his masters. Are you serious? Okay, today we'll be interviewing Casey and to know the reason why he left Nigeria to study pharmacy here in the Philippines. So, Casey, do you mind telling us the reason why you left Nigeria and why? What was your purpose of leaving Nigeria for the first time? Wow. Okay, um, wow. Uh, the thing is, the Philippines. Can you be loud? The Philippines was not actually my dream country per se. It was actually. Um, I didn't even think of leaving Nigeria because after my jump, um, after graduating, that's like SS3, after SS3, the plan was you know, everybody had that plan. After you graduate, you. <laughs> you take jam and enter university then after four years you graduate so it was so weird that after my <laughs> after my first jump I looked at my score I knew that man guy you're going to invest in this year so it was that was 2013 2012 uh, between those times so when I checked it and it seemed like I couldn't um, get admission because the jump score was so low that I can't even I wasn't even thinking of going for a post to TME it was like 160 something <laughs> And I, I, I knew I was brilliant, but the truth is, um, the jump like took me off of guard. Like I was so confident, no overconfident. So I see my grades and everything. I, I got so confused. So in that. And what was the needed score? You got one score. What was needed? <laughs> for medicine. Yeah. Actually, it was medicine I played. So how do you get one sixty two for medicine? It's not possible now. Then There's what was nothing. the needed score? Like two forty. Two forty. So you you have about. I didn't 80. even get one eighty. That is a cut of mark. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was just so low. So, but the truth was, I am grateful to God for my mom. She was still there. She tried to like talk to me. So after the first jump, I said okay. Um, when the wire came out because uh, yeah, when wire came out, it seemed like okay. I had another challenge with maths and physics because I didn't like the subjects at all. So. When I had challenges with those subjects, I had to, okay, I knew I'm not entering university this year, so I had to start um, studying again for WAEC again and JAM for the next year. That was 2014. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> starting to study for those, uh, it was too, oh Lord Jesus, it was really stressful. I go for lessons and other things, and then after it, now taking my second jump, also I was so confident. I see, I'm sure <laughs> I'm entering school this year with my mom and her prayers and everything. I entered the exam hall. <laughs> I was super confident. Like I, yeah, can, I can kill it. Uh, like I many can. questions came and 
it was easy. That's the problem. That, when I'm talking to my 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 um, when I'm talking to students, like the ones that are coming up at the right now, mm -hmm. one of the things I tell them is, see, don't those ones that I think that they are too easy. Yeah, these are the most dangerous ones. Some of them are that we deal with. So it was really, really, really easy. So I was so happy, man. Guy, I've smashed. I, was, I actually went around like a university boy and all these things, man. Jam came out and I put medicine UNA. <laughs> so when the result you, came out UNN University of University of Nigeria. Yeah. When the result came out it was like 182. Wow. At least you got to the cut of mark at this no. point. Medicine is too forty. There's nothing I can do. So my mom was still there. Oh don't worry sir Casey it's okay. Don't worry everything. I was like ah sure I will not worry. So I, but because I got up to 180, I was actually allowed to go for post TMB this time. So I went to UNN for the post TMB. On <laughs> getting there, the persons I saw there for the medicine, those guys are brainiacs. And most of them are not even my mates. Like these are brothers. I was literally seeing the exam. I was like, how will I even compete with people that I, when I see they look like my teachers? So I. I just wrote the thing, I wrote, but I know I will fail it because those things, it's not me that you say I should be calculating something, me that I fail physics and math, I can't be calculating something without a calculator. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, <laughs> the result came out. I just my name in the people that passed, I just my name in the people that failed. So, because the depression started becoming much, my mom had to start taking care of private investing. So, we looked at private investing in Nigeria, well, those, they are so expensive. Yeah. So, they are really, really expensive. So. My mom was like, okay, let's just put it in prayers and you have to take jam again. God, and that was the third time. I want to say something. <laughs> it seems like all Nigerians have this same problem, this jam issue. Like, it seems like this, the question they bring out is not the way they calculate the result at the end. Actually, um, I think for me, I, I just feel students, uh, students are, because I, I don't know, for me, if I would give an opinion on that, 400 questions for an exam for someone that is just coming out from the from secondary school. I don't. I'm not saying it's too much, but I don't think that's really a test of knowledge for me. I don't know. For me, I don't really know. But to an extent, maybe I'll be biased because it didn't favor me. Yeah. But to an extent, um, I just feel the questions are really easy when you study, but they are also tricky because it, it's just asking who is the president of Nigeria, Buhari Mohammed, president. Um, a and C. So you just be thinking, ah, which one is now the answer? Because the, it seems like the three of them, Muhammad is President Muhammad Buhari. Buhari. Then A is Muhammad, B is uh, Buhari, C is President. So probably they're looking for his first name. He, that's the thing, <laughs> and they will not say what is the first, first name. name. They will just say who is the president of Nigeria. So that's the problem most people face. It's really, really tactical. But persons who are intelligent, that's the thing. Some of my friends who went through it they that did well they are really good so i, I know I, let me just say maybe i didn't study well or is overconfidence that's the two things that i know kills me even right now in exams either i didn't study well or i'm so overconfident but because i've noticed that when i'm shaky i used to pass so after the second jam we went into the third one Wow. My mom, no, no, my mom told me I have to take again. That was now 2015. Your but, mom has faith in God. <laughs> but the problem is this: I was, I was a very wicked senior in secondary school. Not, not wicked, they say. I was so strict. But forgive me, like I was strict. And wow. some of my genius those days. Wow. I, I was, so this is like me entering school. What's the, name, what, what's the name of your secondary school? Calm school down. <laughs> I need to put it out there for this. So the thing, the thing is this. I will not think it's Jesus. I'm not going to enter school with SS1 students because this is the third job. Right? Yeah. So a lot of things was going through my mind. So my prayer was like, God, I actually don't want to study in this country anymore. That was my prayer. God, I don't want to. I, I, it was a personal decision. I don't know where. I don't know how. I don't want. I don't care. I don't even want medicine again. Just God, I want to leave this country. So, <laughs> so it was weird. I saw a friend in China. Um, I applied to study in China and. Um, I got the admission, so I told my mom we started raising money and everything. But that's the time of Ebola virus, that was 2015. So China was so scared. So going to their, what's it called, to the embassy, they didn't let people come and all those things. So then my grandma died, they used the money they needed for, for my admission to bury her. So they, everyone was like, okay, Casey, what you do now is. 
just calm down and think you don't jump and shit. See, taking jump in Nigeria, I swear, the more you take, the more depressed you are. And so that wasn't, I was like, God, will I really do this? Like, will I really do this? But I told myself I can actually. I entered for the jump. I placed it. So during the time, that was now when my mom said she was praying and uh, my aunt was praying and she saw this leaflet for someone who came to the Philippines and the person, <coughs> they are not really that buoyant, like it's not that they are very, very rich, yeah. but she was able to take her daughter to the Philippines to study because my, my aunt is um, the headmistress of the school, so, um, the principal of the school. school. So because of that, in particular, it's, she now said, okay, that we should pray about it and everything, my family is doing to church and spiritual. So, <coughs> excuse me, my mom prayed about it and everything, so we got an agent and everything, he helped me get admission to the Philippines. It was just like film share, but they still told me to focus on the jam. They didn't want me to like put all my eggs in one basket and everything. Yeah. So at the end of the day... But you still took the third jam. Yes. That was the painful part of it. I took okay. the third jam. Okay. Now, a day before my flight to the Philippines, they sent my result. And that was the first time they did computer-based tests. Mm. And I got 260. Ooh. I didn't show anybody that result. <laughs> oh, they would have bought you back. I didn't show anybody that result. Oh my so god! I didn't even book my flight. So they've done everything. I've gotten my visa and everything. So we are just planning on going. So um, you know, the whole mind was focused on me. So when they sent the results, I, I remember that evening. I just saw it on the message. I was like, what? I was excited and I said, like, oh, whoa. okay. Then. Uh, <laughs> I held it down. So until I entered the country, I was like, Mommy, my touch jam, I got to see it. Well, you would have stayed back now. Like, don't Imagine, worry. He's, he's looking for 240 and he ended up getting 260 <laughs> at the so, point where he was only leaving I'm happy Nigeria. About that. Yes, I think I, this is just, it's even the best for you, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Because so, but when I came, actually, I wanted to do medicine. That was my main focus. But the, when I came here, one of the things they said you have to go through the A B psychology and all those things. For me, I don't believe medicine is something you can just do A B psychology and enter. So I said, okay, let me start pharmacy first. <laughs> let me finish it up. So mm -hmm. when I'm done, I will enter medicine. Yeah, because medicine in the Philippines is something is somehow stressful. It's like masters, actually. Yeah, you you have to go for one year, six yeah. months before you. So those ones, I don't. I didn't want you to do that A B psychology yeah. thing. So, but by the time I finished pharmacy, the rates, dollar has spiked up. So I couldn't come and start stressing my mom to start paying one point something million naira just for medicine. So I had to focus on the pharmacy. So that was how I landed in pharmacy. And I, the funny thing about it is I fell in love with pharmacy. Like, actually, I feel sorry. I, I love med medical students, I, but I feel pharmacy is actually the the major part in medicine. In the medical field, sorry, we, 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 we. I'm not, I'm being biased because I'm a pharmacist, <laughs> yes, but yes. I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm a pharmacy graduate, sorry. But the truth is this a hospital without medication is like a library without books. I mean, mm. That's the truth. Mm, he's making sense though. <laughs> if, if there's no medication, if the, if there's no medication in, it's in the hospital, mm -hmm. it's useless. What? So, Doctors know how to get your symptoms. They know what is wrong with you. They know how to um, actualize and feel okay. Okay, you're having headache. You're having stomach ache. Okay, that means there's something wrong. But they will also have to send to the pharmacies to collect the medication. They but, have to prescribe the medication. Yeah, I I I get the pharmacy had um, major role to play in the medical field, but mm. see, I'm a nurse. Okay, <laughs> I'm a nurse, and I feel. We all have major roles to play in the medical. That's field. what I say. Like the, the normal um, dogma of medicine is doctors prescribe, pharmacists dispense, nurses administer. They are all important. But what I'm saying is, remember that um, as much as the doctors are also important when it comes to the manufacture of medicines, mm -hmm. the pharmacists are also very much important. So let's say there is no pharmacist or someone did not dedicate their life to manufacture medicine how do we do it the what doctors can't do everything make you making sense that, that's the truth so when i when i go to see that 
the, and me, I'm not someone that likes staying in one place. Like, so my mom actually told me, see, Casey, if you really want to do medicine, you are actually going to dedicate your life. A medical doctor is dedicating your, his life to the patient. You're going to dedicate your whole life to the patient. No holidays. All you are doing is to get, to get bigger, to grow, to get to, is it consultant or something? So, but as a pharmacist, I feel I have more opportunities. Like, personally, I don't even want to go and stay in a drugstore and be selling drugs. Now, I want to teach. I have more opportunities. I can be teaching, I can have my own drugstore. At the same time, I can be working in the hospital. So, as much as. In conclusion, <laughs> he fell in love with pharmacy. Yeah, that's we it. can really mm. see it in him. You can see that he's very in love with the cause, other than studying medicine. So, how is the Philippines treating you? And how is it like studying pharmacy in the Philippines? I want to know if you will advise people, although we'll be giving details to this question now in the next video, but I'll be asking him if he will give advice to people in Nigeria struggling with their dam as well to come over to the Philippines to study pharmacy or no. Okay, um, education system in the Philippines is super easy compared to Nigeria. When I say super easy, it doesn't mean that if you can just stay and not study and graduate, no. But it's easier compared to the hassles in Nigeria. This is an example. Let me say, personally, uh, in Nigeria we have this um, <laughs> test, 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 then long exam. They have to take the whole exam, everything you've done from the first time and then I don't know, I didn't do my invest in Nigeria, but I feel that that was how secondary school was. Now when you invest here in the Philippines, they give you prelims, midterms, finals, they give you a space of time so that if you know you've messed up and for my school, for my school, they did it twenty percent of your grade for the prelims, thirty percent for the midterms, then fifty percent for the finals. So if you saw that you messed up already in your prelims, you have to like buckle up for your midterms so that you can do it. So I feel um, in the Philippines it was easier for me to like study without being scared. At least if I know I've messed up already, I, I what I do, I try as much as possible, as much as possible to do very well in my prelims. Then I really don't get that serious in midterms. But finals, I put in the best, and I, I didn't because it has the highest. Yes, rate. so I, I didn't really feel that. I don't know. That's so much stress. They con um, as much as I was lucky enough that my mom was able to afford a good school, so my school also had good environment for learning. There is um, in the class there are icons like, and we are not too much in the class. We are just like maybe twenty to forty. We are just no, yeah, twenty three or so. So we all sit together. So the teachers talk to. So for me, in the Philippines, studying in the Philippines is. Um, it's okay, especially from someone that you can you do better from in the Philippines if you are coming from Nigeria. Sincerely, if you're a studious person coming from Nigeria to the Philippines, you start, I, I do tell my Filipinos, no offense, huh? but I do tell my Filipino friends, it will be more difficult for you to go to Nigeria to study because, man, the, yeah, life, the lifestyle there is. We are very tyrants there in Nigeria. So it's. It will be more difficult, and the, I, I see. I had a competition in class those days. One lady like that, um, Ella is her name. She was so good. She's I, I Filipino yeah, Filipino. and she was really really good. So, um, but I know that Ella is someone that she crams. <laughs> you know, cram and pop. She can like have a lot of cramming. Then, oh, I don't know how to cram, so I have to understand it. That's different. A difference between both of us, but she's really good. She's really, really good. Most of the professors, she has a good character and everything. So most of the professors, when they are talking about her, I also had in Nigeria another comp not competition, but yeah, competition. That he was also a very good guy, but he's in Yoruba. He's a very, he's very good. So those people actually they were the ones that kept me pushing because you know when you start. <laughs> when you start that, okay, I, I want to be the best in something, you have to focus on the ball. At the same time, there are so many distractions. So you have to know what, it's not about, it's not about um, the Philippines is conducive. You have to also, there are some of my mates that we started together, they weren't able to graduate. It's not, it's not that I'm being boosted, apart from God, is there, but you have to also be focused on what you want to do. Now for people come in Nigeria, coming to study in the Philippines, um, it's good, it's perfect, and it's a good idea to want to leave Nigeria to come abroad. But for me, from experience, 
one of the things you have to make sure is that your parents are, are capable to help you here because sincerely there is no work per se here and if you are the one that is going to cut out for your bills or maybe think of every other thing you can't concentrate yeah. for pharmacy you need time you need energy you need perseverance so you can't concentrate so if your parents are not um buoyant enough just stay back in nigeria because the rates now is very high nigerian currency rate is very high if your parents are, can afford it even if your parents can afford to take you to us eh, if you have time it's even better to come to the philippines because it's cheaper for you here than there in the us and it will make make it easier for you that you have enough money to at least stay buy things and you can just be comfortable because if you are struggling from nigeria as much as god me i'm also um, a testimony of god's greatness because it's just my mom my dad is already late so I'm, I'm a testimony of god's greatness god knows what i'm saying but everybody's grace is not the same yeah so somehow we also have to use our tongue to count our teeth to know okay see i can do this i can do. so if your parents are not really buoyant then all, just stay back in nigeria because if you come here you face frustration you face depression you face fear and for you to for you to what is it called for you to be able to focus and study you really need to have this but a less of it imagine the thing depressing is just school it's okay that okay if school is depressing you can try to focus more on it than okay you never even chop <laughs> you've not slept you don't have accommodation you are owing people almost um, 30 to 40 thousand pesos and the 400 thousand naira you've not paid your school fees so everything will be frustrating yeah. you so for me coming to the philippines is perfect from nigeria you will do perfectly well here if you are studious yes but make sure your parents are buoyant enough make sure your your sponsor is buoyant enough to help, help you, you. all right all right guys we'll be having more interview with mr kelechi Obonaya. But it will be on the next video. We'll be interviewing him more about pharmacy here in the Philippines and other topics. Okay? So if you've not subscribed to this channel, are you waiting for kindly smash the red subscription button and subscribe to my YouTube channel, our YouTube channel. I really your girl, Nas Echo Abigail. Bye, Ami. Tell my subscribers bye. Oh, bye, subscribers. Bye, subscribers. <laughs> Tell them you love them. Ah. Tell them you love them. And they should you, subscribe. Um, I love you, subscribe. Oh, I that's good.